Hi, I want to talk about, in this video, I want to talk about reunions, high school reunion and my high school reunion. I went to the 30th high school reunion last night and I want to talk about my feelings about uh, how I felt, obviously feelings about how I felt and what I wanted versus what happened. Some good, some bad, well, not necessarily some bad, but um, some not as good as what I had wanted. Let me describe the scenario. Okay. All right. So I'm working a, um, an eight to four thirty job and this is the 30th high school reunion. So I'm looking forward to it and I'm checking my Facebook. Um, there's a Facebook group devoted to our class, our graduating class. And I'm checking to see there are some people that have listed themselves as going. There are some that listed themselves as maybe going and some not going and some um, listed as invited. I guess that meant that uh, they were invited, but they didn't give any other, uh, they didn't give any response. All right. So I'll try to touch on why this is important to me. I've been to past reunions. Uh, I've been to almost every reunion and from past experience, well, let me go all the way back to high school graduation, that final uh, semester of high school. Uh, I've talked about this before. Um, it was a, the, the final semester was a time when I wanted to uh, open myself up to other people and show other people that I wasn't just somebody who uh, was in the halls and didn't really talk to many people. I should actually describe what I was like in high school, which is a contrast to what I was like outside of high school. Uh, outside of high school, I was uh, very much a reader. You probably can tell that. You can probably guess that. I was a reader. I was very dynamic. And I like to think of myself. I have this self-image of myself as being dynamic and uh, being in the forefront and I want to have a full, rich life. Uh, however, in school, for whatever reason, maybe in doing this channel and these videos, maybe I can figure that out. I didn't talk to many people. I remember early on, I was friendly. I, if somebody, if a classmate were to talk to me or ask me something, I was, I was uh, polite sounds like you're uh, you're just doing it just to be kind, but um, I'm open, naturally open, and uh, I'm friendly. Uh, but in school, I don't remember, aside from a close best friend, uh, I, I don't remember myself talking to a lot of people or, or having my, um, being very sociable in school. I wasn't in any clique. Uh, primarily because I didn't feel any connection in terms of clique or uh, social group. Uh, and in some sense, that's a good thing. I had enough uh, pride in myself. I had enough sense of self-worth and uh, self-confidence or self-image. I like the term self-image. I had enough self-image that I didn't feel any need to... to... Uh, judge myself based on how sociable I was, I mean, how popular I was in school and so forth. All right. Outside of school, I was reading about UFOs, I was paranormal and so forth. I was, I was watching TV. I liked Star Trek. I liked uh, television production and film production. I liked movies. I went to movies, uh, the movie theater quite a bit. And I had, um, going away from that, I had lots of projects. I would write screenplays and script, well, not quite screenplays yet, but I would write television scripts uh, in high school. I mean, during my high school years, um, I was actively sending out scripts. And this leads into what I'm going to talk about in terms of um, the high school reunion, the contrast and so forth. Um, with my mom helping or serving as um, an agent, agent, so to speak, uh, I was, I, I'd gotten a list of um, representatives, agents, basically, in the East Coast and the West Coast for the Writers Guild. 
And um, I also got um, production addresses, uh, uh, addresses of production companies of TV shows that I enjoyed. And I would write a script like uh, Night Court, I remember. Um, and then I, uh, Night Court may or may not have been one where I actually sent the script in, but I know definitely Star Trek The Next Generation and uh, other other TV shows, uh, Married With Children, I remember. Um, and I would send them off and I would contact them after a while to see if they had gotten it. Uh, I was naive at the time, but it showed how um, desperate in a constructive way I was, uh, impassioned as I was to try to show uh, my, my skill and talent and see if I can get a job or get some attention from the scripts. Um, unfortunately, I didn't, I did not live in Los Angeles, uh, where, which is where you really need to be, but I still wanted to do it. Okay. Enough of that. Um, as I said, I was reading, uh, books about the paranormal and I was watching TV and so forth and, uh, playing in with other, with kids outside of school. Um, so I felt I had a full life and so being in a popular clique in school wasn't, wasn't even on my radar. I just didn't care, but it seemed like everybody else would talk, uh, with their friends or I'd see some people making out kids making out in hallways and so forth. And, um, I also didn't, here's the one exception to that self-image thing. Even though I had a positive self-image, I didn't see myself as, as attractive to the opposite sex. So, um, or just fashionable, uh, you know, being fashionable, I thought required some money, like literally some money. And I know my mom would get um, like garage sales and second, and whatever sources uh, she was able to get clothes for me. And so um, and for whatever reason, I didn't go for a, I didn't go for an after school job um, because I was focused on the real career of trying to be a screenwriter. Actually at that time it wasn't screenwriter, it was television writer. And I was already, I was interested in Star Trek and I was already fascinated about developing my own TV series or at least thoughts of ideas. I don't think I'd reached that point yet. I think it was already, I think I was just um, thinking of interesting story ideas, basically. So um, the second semester of, of you know, you, the, there's the final senior year of high school and there's the first semester and then the second semester. And I knew the, um, I've mentioned this a few times trying to, uh, about me trying to open myself up and show and so forth. Um, I think it was one, uh, poem that I sent somebody, I think that started the ball rolling to, um, towards if I could show this person, um, if I could impress this person with my poetry and so forth, um, I think that led, then maybe I can show just in general that I'm not, let me rephrase that, like opening up to this person I had known from, you know, since elementary school, um, I had hoped it, it, it opened my eyes to the possibility, I think. Uh, I'm trying, trying to remember back. It opened up my eyes to the possibility of showing the other kids um, what I really am like. And I'm not just somebody that nobody talks to and so forth. At least that was my impression of them. I, um, it was more like I saw them chatting with each other and I would just, I felt more comfortable just going to class and leaving at the end of the school, you know, going on the bus and going home. And, and that's when my day would really start. Um, school was basically a chore for me to do until I was in senior year and I graduated just so I can get that diploma so I can go to college and actually continue on that road towards um, becoming big in, in TV. 
uh, and I had just begun to write um, outlines for uh, movie um, movie projects. Uh, that, but that's another topic. In uh, earlier, um, just before senior year began, that was about when I began uh, writing movie outlines. Not quite treatments, but movie outlines. Um, so, so I I thought, and I've written, I mentioned this before, you know, written my own notes, um, that someday they will, if I make it big in, well, someday when I make it big in Los Angeles, in the industry, <clears throat> excuse me, they will know um, what I'm really like. And at that point, I remember in the 1992 camp, uh, presidential campaign, that was when I, w I became interested in politics and I wanted to run, become, run for governor and then run for president of the United States. And I was serious about it. And I, well, that's another hobby I, I had. I was studying um, politics and the political process and how bills are formed and, and um, campaigning. And I wrote my inaugural speech and so forth. <clears throat> and in preparation, a little bit of economics, and that I carried forward into college. Um, I had two majors. Uh, that's getting ahead of myself, but I'll just mention I had two majors. T uh, essentially, it was TV, radio, film was one, and the other was political science. So anyway, back to high school. Um, so there was a um, a sad, confusing. It was, it was sad because it was confusing um, <clears throat> attempt at a friendship with somebody. And so I, I remember crying basically during the graduation ceremony. And um, I wanted, I, I felt little inklings of um, little, I, wanna, I won't want to say advancements, but little, little inklings that, or mo peaks, moments when think I was able to show that what kind of a person I really am. Um, I'm more than just uh, a faceless nobody, you know, walking the halls, nobody knows. Um, so then we, everybody seemed to move and scatter after high school graduation. And Facebook did not exist at that time, and not even MySpace. Um, but I would, I would, call people from high school sometimes and, and people from that I had known like in my um, I went to on a trip to Israel and I still had that list for a while and I would email them or I would talk to them um, and I started college and I I I was going part-time so I couldn't even be I was stuck in the same town that I had grown up in and it seemed like everybody else was moving away and they had better uh, better lives burgeoning um, and so without going into detail you get the impression you get you get the idea get the impression uh, and I felt stuck and I kept feeling stuck and I and it, it became stronger and I I felt trapped there were moments when I would talk with my mom I would confide in my mom I feel lonely sometimes um, I want a girlfriend um, that's when I, um, because of that failed, you know, attempt at uh, opening up and being a friend to somebody, uh, particular in particular, in uh, that that final year, um, that set me on course to trying to fill it with um, trying to find a girlfriend, and um, I wanted to find someone Jewish because I'm Jewish and I didn't want to waste. <laughs> I'll just say her meaning some potential girl I meet. I didn't want to waste her time um, because I wanted to marry someone Jewish and um, I just didn't want to waste my time. I didn't, I did not want to waste her time being this high, her being this hypothetical person. So I kept looking and online, all sorts of different things. And this is for another video, um, which I, I've made, I've talked before about this, but, um, so I have not been able to find anybody, unfortunately. Uh, they're all in New York City, apparently. <laughs> they're not where I am. And financial problems, a financial inability 
to be able to afford to move elsewhere. And I had to, you know, keep my mom company for it, whether that was a, the right decision or not. Um, I stayed with my mom and I think my mom, now that I know certain things, I think it helped my mom emotionally. I, I'm proud that, um, that my mom had my, you know, had me for company and it probably helped. Um, but it stunted, I think it, um, overall, it feels like some part of my life was stunted. Obviously some part of my life was stunted. And so then there came MySpace and then Facebook. And I would learn about these other lives and then now they're marrying, they're having kids and so forth. And I felt, um, I felt stunted, I felt lonely and I'm frustrated and, but I just had to suck it up. And I, I, sometimes I confided in people, I guess, probably. Um, but I didn't make a big thing out of, out of it. Um, so the uh, five year high school reunion, um, I remember it was, I think it was at the high school or something. Um, I think. And then there was not much. And I remember some people going to it. And then the 10 year high school reunion, I went to a rest, there was, it was held at a restaurant. And there was, I think one of the classmates, one of our classmates was in a band and then the band played. And um, I just remember walking around and, and nobody really interacting with me. I wanted to interact. Um, I remember somebody saying some nasty comment to me and so forth. And, um, I just wanted to get a, a taxi cab or something, and just leave. And, um, then the 15 year high school reunion, um, I don't remember what that was. I, the 20th, I was trying to figure it out with somebody yesterday, the 20th. Um, I couldn't because I had, uh, a, a, a schedule commitment, a schedule conflict with something else and I couldn't go to that one and then um, then here's the 30th so that's why the 30th was really important and I've grown in different ways um, I wanted to show that I am mature and and I still wanted to show um, though I still had that motivation that I did in high school at the end of high school to show what I was really like and so I have a car now. That means something to me. Um, it's in a nearby area. I don't have that much driving experience, but I'm proud that I could be able to drive. I have a job. Um, so after work, I drove home and I immediately, I went to the bathroom, of course, and I ate a little bit. And then um, I went, I drove straight over because it's, it was, it was starting soon. So I had within that hour, I had, I, I, I it would have, it would start. And fortunately for me, it was a straight path. And then towards the end, you have to make a turn and uh, go down a street over. So, and plus, uh, it had to be a time when there was a flood watch, not a flood warning, but a flood watch. Fortunately, the weather became a lot better, much, much better. The sun was shining and so forth. So I, um, it was at a, I'll just say at a um, outdoor venue restaurant. Um, so I go in and there's a, like a large porch, a large porch patio type thing set up. And, uh, there's a kind of a, a tent overhead thing. Um, and I just walk around and nobody really, I don't really recognize anybody. And I like to think that I, I look youthful in some sense, genetically. Um, and I've kept myself healthy. I haven't grown a beard. I haven't uh, gotten much fatter. I ha I've kept myself in good shape because, sorry, except for my collar. There we go. Um, I like to keep that look of youth. Um, I like to preserve my, uh, my appearance. Um, I like to look youthful because uh, I just, I don't like it when people age and they get wrinkles and they get beards and they don't look like who they were. Um, I just, just something innate within me. Um, so I'm walking around and I'm trying to 
see people, not many people showing up. There were a lot of women showing up. And um, of course, I don't want to seem awkward or like I'm hitting on them or number one, I, I don't want to give an impression like I'm hitting on them. I'm, I just want to be friendly. And of course, some of them have their boyfriends or husbands, husbands by this point probably, or they have their girlfriends and they chat and I, I don't, I know when there are a bunch of girls, like three girls talking, um, I'm just some guy walking around. I don't, they probably don't want me standing around while, uh, while they're engaging in girl talk. So, um, and, and I'm guessing that guys talk, even though I can probably do a good job at, at it, um, I think guys talk in a different way than girls do. So, um, out of respect for them, I just knew when to go and try and find someplace else to talk, to find somebody else to talk with. And so I, after a long while walking around, I sat down and I, um, I wrote, I typed this out. I had these feelings on my mind for a while and I just sat down and, um, this is what I wrote. Here I am at the reunion, a heart to bond as deep as the ocean, but no inviting face. It's 30 years all ago, all over, excuse me. Let me start over. Let me talk more. Uh, carefully. Here I am at the reunion, a heart to bond as deep as the ocean, but no inviting face. It's 30 years ago all over again. Moments when sublimity, like, you know, sublime, um, hit sublimity hits hard. If you don't know what sub, sublime means, um, I, you know, I don't take anything for granted. If you don't know what sublime means it means it's the opposite of ridiculous sublime means very not only very important but i like to think of it as truest the truest nature and in its true self the its true self makes it very significant very important moments when sublimity hits hard as brave as I can be, I see myself as roaming around like an extra wheel. The people I especially wanted to wanted to see aren't there. Circumstances gave them an excuse to remain. Um, they just didn't show up. They had, uh, for whatever other reason, they couldn't. Maybe the weather, something. So there were people that I especially wanted to meet and chat with um, who weren't there. And... Um, they probably have very important, busy, uh, life filled lives. Um, not to, not to demean or besmirch or whatever the people that did show up. I don't want to say anything like that at all. Um, it's just that those weren't the ones I really remembered and especially wanted to talk with, but I'm glad that they showed up and I, after writing that, you know, during and then after that, of course, I, I walked around and I um, tried, I, I talked with them and I, um, I found some way sometimes to um, say something nice. Um, but, and, and it got better as people came in. There weren't that many people that showed up anyway. I'd say off the, off the top of my head, I, I'd say maybe 12, not including like people they brought with them. So, um, so I was, so it got better and I sat down and chatted with some of them and the food was nice. And I was glad one of them, I was especially glad, um, showed up and I recognized her right away and she'd been nice. Um, she had gotten me, um, through sometimes, um, some difficult, lonely, periods I could talk with her on like message her and uh, for a particular reason we can't um, we can't meet face to face publicly um, because of something on her end um, so it was nice that she showed up and we were able to chat and um, 
so so where does that leave me now so okay so uh it was getting dark and i was still concerned about making it home safely um i'm not that experienced a driver even though it's a straight it's you know you go down and you make a turn for a while and you go down a street and then you make another turn then it's like for 15 minutes or something it's just a straight route until you get to the familiar area where I live and of course even in the dark I can make out um, where to turn so forth after that um, even though there's that that's that's pretty easy I'm not uh, an experienced driver and it was getting dark it was about nine o'clock I figured I and the and the uh, and after I had been eating some food, um, the bugs came out and started eating me. So um, I figured it was time to leave, and I think at least some other uh, group couple left anyway. So um, I headed home, and I these are some thoughts I had. Um, I'm proud. I may not have much. You know, actually, let me reverse. Um, I did not want to make... An, uh, an idiot out of my, an arse or something out of myself for um, bragging. I didn't want to over brag. And I felt like the same situation like my mom had been in where she wouldn't talk. She's accomplished a lot. She's deceased now, but she's accomplished a lot. And uh, she wouldn't mention that. She just didn't, she just didn't have a habit of mentioning that to a lot of people. Even though there are other people that brag, oh yes, I got a PhD here and so forth, and oh well, I'm I I head the Boy Scouts and da 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 da. She wasn't that type of person. Uh, of course, she's not the person to head the Boy Scouts anyway. But that's another story. Um, no, but she um, she um, went to uh, MIT, Yale, and Cornell, and uh, got a PhD and all sorts of different things. Uh, and this was in the 1950s and early 60s when women um, had different rights than they do now, or d different uh, possibilities than they do now. Um, so I felt, back to me, um, I did not want to brag. I felt as though internally, if they actually wanted to know more about me, um, they could they could ask, um, I didn't want to brag about what I was doing for a living and so forth. That's not really who I am. Who am I? I'm, um, I'm somebody who developed philosophically. I've read more books. I'm more aware of the world. Um, I learned about politics. I, I um, moved. I had like a, for a month, I, moved, I lived in a different area of the country. That was good for my life experience. Um, I developed myself as a writer, as a screenwriter. Um, I did mention a few times, or at least once, that um, I got into uh, songwriting, and that's on my other channel, my creative, more creative ch project channel, YouTube channel. And um, but it seems like that's not what they would want to hear. I'm guessing that's not what they would want to hear. Um, I'm not married. I don't have kids. When I when I talk to them, when I overhear what they're saying, um, they it's it seems like it's um, oh well we had uh, hypothetically it's like oh well my second child is going to high school now and oh it's strange you know it's it's odd to think it was 30 years ago we were kids and oh my husband's this or my wife that or we're we're our kids little league or something that's all they're they're into so that's what I felt. That's why one reason why I phrased it that way, like it's high school all over again. Um, it's me thinking about these larger ideas and developing myself creatively at home um, and thinking that I will become somebody. I mean, I already am somebody, but I mean, I, my life will um, adjust to it and I'll, I will be able to fulfill those passions and interests that I already have that nobody else in school seems to know about, probably knows about. Um, so I don't have, I'm not married, I don't have kids, I don't have these things happening in my life that they do. So um, 
where would I be in, in terms of chatting with them? Um, there's no connection point. So, but I was proud that I do have a job, a job, and it's a nice, it's a relatively nice job in a nice company. It's highly rated company in terms of treating people, treating its employees well. And um, I'm not making that much money, but I am making some money, and I'm living on my own. Um, I'm I'm proud of. Um, after my mom's death, um, I'm proud that I. Um, I was able to make it through and move most of my stuff uh, and all of her stuff. Um, so I have both. I'm, I'm safekeeping in um, an apartment and I have a car and so forth. Um, whether that makes it seem as though I'm, I don't have as much as other people have, I don't know. But, um, but I was able to drive home. And one thing that was very important to me was driving up in a car. It's not a fancy car. It's um, I'll, it's a sedan, and um, a nice uh, two thousand something or other. You know, it's um, I can't remember two thousand nineteen car, and uh, so it's relatively modern and it's in good shape, and I keep it in good shape. I keep it clean, very clean, and um, I I wanted to drive up and and just nonchalantly get out of the car, show I'm independent, I can be able to get there on my own and uh, be there and then drive home on my own. And I was proud of that. And I am proud of that. So um, does that, does, I guess this kind of concludes the YouTube video I wanted to make. Uh, does that match your thoughts, your experiences? Have you been to high school reunions yet? Um, Tell me in the comments, and uh, thanks, and I'll see you next time. Bye.